Yes, Hickok 45, your internet shooting companion. Coming to you from the beautiful green hills of Tennessee with a smoking suppressor. You see, <laughs> the best kind when they're smoking means you've been using them, right? <laughs> yes, the home of Jeff Quinn. Yeah, James Yeager and all sorts of people. Right, we miss them. Glad you're here and uh, enjoying the tick infested woods with me, taking the risk to uh, just endure whatever happens here, whatever I shoot, whatever I say. So glad to have you around this Sunday. I'm a little early this Sunday going out of town. Actually, I'm back by the time you see me, right? So yeah, kind of weird huh, to talk and think about it that way. So anyway, if the world came to an end and I didn't know it, you know, that's the reason, all right? Uh, I'll tell you about it next week, a little traveling. Uh, even though I'm back today, but I can't tell you about it, you know? can't do these on Sunday morning duh right so today as you're watching it is the 20 or well it's the 16th yeah the year is 2023 the day is July the 16th yeah I'm an old a year older this week do I look older do I seem older do I sound older do I seem just a bit more senile yeah it'd be hard to tell wouldn't it <laughs> anyway, glad you're here. Glad I'm here. Got out uh, one of the old Banish uh, suppressors here from Silencer Central. I was in the mood to shoot a uh, 1911. This one. I've been seeing it in the safe as I move things around. <laughs> I needed to shoot that. At least uh, I haven't had the uh, threaded barrel in it for a while. So I did that. It's, it's, it's just fun. I can't hit as well at distance with it. Uh, I don't know where I was hitting it, at, shooting at the gong over there. I don't know where it was. It was going in the dirt, it kept sounding like. So uh, I'll take a few more shots at, at that before we, before we quit here. Uh, when you have a, a suppressor and your sights are not elevated, like my FN 545 and 510, all that kind of thing, uh, you know, it, it just makes it a different proposition. It's uh, silly to try to shoot accurately, generally, at long longer range a lot of people don't do that with handguns anyway but it, it's it makes it even more difficult without sights right <laughs> but now up close here and everything you know you can you can hit something and uh, that's one reason I bought that FN 4 545 uh, it's just nice to have a pistol with sights that are they're big but I don't know they don't seem to get in the way it's a big old gun anyway and uh, you need to pop a suppressor on and it you see this it, it doesn't change anything in terms of your shooting and hitting things other than what your ears hear right so here i am yeah man this is uh the guardian dan weston by the way 45 acp okay you saw another fire my head held up we'll take a few shots with it as well uh yeah this is this is a cool rig <laughs> it really is so man uh, uh, what else? Well, let me go ahead and show you what else I have out here. Uh, this is a newish firearm. Why don't I just shoot it? Where's my, yeah, let me put ears on. Yeah, I need ears for this one. It's not suppressed. I don't know where it is. Oh, there it is in my pocket. Well, I'll be darned. I'll be darned. Huh. Well, it's in my pocket, and you say, okay, 642, right? Did you count the shots? Did you count the shots? Go back and do it real quick. I'll wait for you. Yeah, six shots. So what I have is the uh, K6XS from Kimber. You know, I have the K6S, the stainless model. You've seen it, and... Uh, We've done a couple of videos at least with it, and I like that pistol. I bragged on it when I bought it. Did I buy it first or did I borrow one from Buds and then liked it and bought one later because I liked it? That happens. <laughs> That's happened quite a few times. But anyway, I have one. And uh, I, 
I, uh, man, it hadn't been many, that many days ago. I was uh, with a buddy. We stopped in a little local gun shop and just looking around. I hadn't been in there in a while and and uh, and milled around a little bit. I don't remember what brought it to my attention. If one of the uh, owners or workers in the shop asked me if I'd seen it, or my buddy said something about it, or I, or I just know I don't, I don't know, brain dead. I don't remember how it was, but um, it caught me off guard. I didn't, I didn't know that Kimber had made the K6 in uh, an alloy frame. You know, so oh, so I wanted to look at it, and I did. It's interesting. So pretty light, you know. And you know why I like it, because I like revolvers. And then I also, one of my very favorites is the old 642 Airweight, you know, Smith & Wesson 38 Special with an alloy frame. Just a tad smaller, not much. And uh, so I looked at it over there, messed around, and we went on eight and whatever we did, went shooting actually. I couldn't get that out of my head. I didn't. I didn't know. I was at the NRA meeting. I, I guess I didn't hang out at the Kimber booth. I, I don't know. I just. I just didn't see anything about it. Um, or if I did, it didn't register uh, that much with me. I, I think I just didn't know at all because it would have gotten my attention. And uh, so I didn't know this thing was out. Well, I guess you know <laughs> probably what happened. Well. A couple of days later, it was on my mind. I, you know, back in there and look at that more carefully. And I did some research on it to see what it weighed exactly and all that kind of thing before I even went back and looked at it again. Because I know myself pretty well. So, you know, I might end up walking out of here with that thing, or, or I might uh, contemplate that seriously once I look at it and uh, more seriously. And so I wanted to know. Uh, you know, I have the research in, in my brain, you know, about that and uh, how much, how compared you know, with the stainless model and with the 642 weight wise and all that kind of thing. Big thing is it holds six rounds. That's, that's big. Uh, yeah, it really is. It's, it's, it's a six shooter versus a five shooter. That's one of the compromises with the J frame generally, right? Smith and Wesson. And this thing is just not much bigger at all. It, uh, in fact, I think probably in the video with the, the stainless one, I probably demonstrated that and showed you it'll fit in the same uh, basic holster. It, 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 I think, as I recall, it's just a little tight. And uh, it depends on the holster. If it's a leather holster, it's, it's probably going to fit. But in a Kydex that's you know how they're molded to sp this specific model of firearm uh it it kind of fits pushes out just a little bit at least in the pocket model there so anyway it's a good judge you may not want to carry it in a holster that's made for a different firearm even if it sort of does fit uh, but it, a little too big just to, whatever you want it ideally the holster it's that's made for it right so it'll you know click in and, and fit right so uh, uh that, which reminds me, appreciate Alabama holster <laughs> as I fondle their uh, pocket holster because uh, it, it makes this firearm, even though it's just a tad bigger, uh, t to me, carryable. It, it really does. And uh, yeah, I like so appreciate Alabama holster for their support of the channel. Uh, and I've been carrying this uh, for several days now, and I don't know, it might it might end up being my carry revolver when I carry a revolver. And since it has six rounds, it, it, uh, it, it enhances uh, the chances that I will carry a revolver. I mean, the nice thing about a revolver, the 642, is it's so small, you just almost don't know you have it and everything. Yeah, it's only five rounds, so what? 38 special, so what? Uh, it's a bullet nobody wants to be in the way of. And, uh, and plus P, and uh, you know, so another round, you know, uh, ups the ante just a bit when you're thinking about, okay, and a lot of you like the 642, the air weight, or some variation, you know, the little J frame. 
Uh, you make that compromise willingly as well, five rounds. You've got semi-autos, just like I do, that you really like, but you you go back and forth, and, ah, man, that, that, this little J-frame is just, just wonderful. It's so convenient and lightweight and everything, and, and uh, feels good. Gee, I'm, I'm just going to carry it. You know, so we go through those decision-making processes, and uh, a big factor in that decision is the capacity, isn't it? Uh, or at least it's a consideration. And, you know, I know it doesn't sound like much, but one more round, uh, is big, you know, when you've got five and you go to another one, you know, so you're adding quite a bit. Anyway, I got it and I kind of like it, so we'll see. I've shot it some, I haven't shot it extensively. I don't need to shoot it extensively. I shoot it enough to know, you know it feels good, got the trigger, I'm familiar with the trigger, and, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, yeah, and one thing I've, I've talked about that, we, you know, probably from time to time, how, how, some firearms in the lightweight world, like you can get a 44 Magnum. I forget the model numbers. There's PD models, or is that what they're called? And you got 357 Smiths and and uh, 44s and all this kind of thing. Wow, they're no fun to shoot at all, at all. You know, uh, but if you can control it, you know, and uh, you know, <laughs> and you can hit something with it then it's something you could carry more easily because let's face it you're going to carry firearms maybe your whole life and never need it but uh let me sneeze <coughs> excuse me uh so you know there's a there's a place for lightweight revolvers um and, but you really don't i think uh, well one of the criticisms is well how many times you're going to be able to shoot that before it shoots apart you know that alloy frame and all that with a 642 or this or others well i don't know uh it's not an issue with me because i've generally i've got the steel version of those guns too if i want to shoot a lot and uh uh you just don't need to shoot them a whole lot if you if you have shot a fair amount in your life and you can pull up a, a lightweight gun like that and you can hit okay with it and you like the trigger you get used to it do some dry firing you know get you some snap caps do a lot of dry firing and you're real comfortable with it and and you fired live ammo the same ammo you're going to carry and it goes right where you want it to go and you don't have a big problem you you register in your brain the recoil from the full power ammo and you know you just know what it feels like it's not a problem you know, you don't need to shoot it a million times, and uh, it's not a problem, really not. So, it's going to be up close and dirty anyway. Speaking of a, a pen comment about it, you know, like that uh, that Tucker video that's, you know, so busy. I think I mentioned last week right now. People, I can't find that video you're referring to, you know, that interview that that whole silly video is based on about the shoulder thingy that goes up and all that, barrel shrouds. Uh, yeah, I pinned the link to it and I've got it in the description, you know, uh, people, a lot of people don't think to look in a description, you know, to see what's there for some reason. All right, shoot this Winchester. What is this? Uh, it's plus P. Yeah, 38 special plus P, 125 grain. All right. So I'm going to put him back in the, the holster. And so this is something I would advise. Uh, and I don't know if I'm carrying that specific, I like that round. Uh, and that's kind of what I carry, a hollow point plus P, of course, 38 special, whether it's a federal or that or something else. Uh, so you wanna, you wanna have whatever you're gonna carry, uh, get you a couple boxes of that and just pull it out and make sure it shoots like you mean for it. And you get the feel of it, and yeah, you get a little more recoil with this versus the stainless steel model, because this weighs about 15 or 16 ounces. That one is, I don't know, 25, 26. It's heavier, and that was my uh, disappointment with that firearm. Uh, I mean, I'm not not necessarily surprised, but it is my my disappointment. I uh, I don't ask for much. I just ask for a firearm about this size that I can carry around my pocket that weighs, oh, three ounces, has no recoil, 
and holds 27 rounds in it. That's all I'm asking for, right? So again, you can't choose physics. So I, I knew and know when I bought it, that K6, that's a kind of a chunk, but man, I like it, it holds six and it's, it's almost J-frame size and everything. But that's the thing, almost, key word, right? You get home with something like that, you shoot it and you carry it a while and yeah, this is a great gun. This is gonna be my carry gun, my carry revolver or whatever, you know? And then, oh, then you decide to go back to uh, your 642 air weight uh, for a day or something. And then, oh man, that feels so much better. And I can shoot it just as well. I give up one round, you know? And so you, you just don't carry the trunk, right? And people make fun of us all, uh, you know, whenever we talk about the weight of a firearm. Well, what's two ounces or, or half a pound or eight ounces is nothing. Well, yeah, it's not if you're doing bench presses, you know, or whatever. But if you're carrying a firearm in your pocket, or on your belt even, uh, you just notice it. And it just pulls on your belt and your pants. And, and if you've got one that weighs a lot less and you can shoot it just as well, guess what? It becomes highly desirable, okay? So, uh, and that might help, uh, uh, talking about that more again, <laughs> hopefully helps some younger people or people just getting into firearms and getting excited about certain firearm that you just, this is gonna be my carry gun, and I shoot it well, I love this thing, you know. Uh, I hate to disappoint you, but but you'll go through the same process. Ask anybody who's been shooting and carrying for 10, 20 years, 30, 40, like me, it's just a natural progression. You, you tend to progress towards a lighter firearm. And part of it is you're tired of carrying a chunk you know, that you don't need necessarily, you know. And the more practiced and experienced you get shooting, the more you realize that, and you don't even know it at first, maybe. Maybe that big Glock 19 or whatever it is, it's the only gun you seem to be able to hit anything with. Well, that, that makes a difference. You know, you need a firearm that when you shoot, there's not too much recoil. You can hit with it, but you have trouble hitting with anything else. You just have not had that much experience with a handgun. So yeah, go for it. Whatever you shoot, you need to be able to shoot it. That's the important thing, right? That is the important thing. And uh, but as your skill improves, uh, increases, uh, you'll 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 start thinking a little bit differently. Yeah, you really will. Uh, and you'll start looking for lighter guns that you can shoot well, if they're out there. It's not necessarily the holy grail. It doesn't have to be you know, light as a feather, you know, or anything like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, oh no, that's what, <laughs> I brought some 357 rounds over here. Here's, here's the thing. Now this is 38 special, unlike the K6 that is 357 or 38. And, uh, you know, it's a cylinder again, a little learning moment for my, my, uh, not noticing on the box. A 357 round is longer and it generally will not chamber in a, uh, a 30, well, it'll go in just fine. It just doesn't go in quite far enough for the cylinder to close by, by design. So guess what? I'm not going to shoot any of those. Uh, <laughs> I got some more 38s here. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, be that as it may, can I shoot it again? Uh, I like, I think I really like it. Now, one thing I had to do, I'll, and talk about that. I'm just putting back in my pocket. In my alpha. Now I label my pocket a, a clue. If you're a, a gun nut like I am, and you uh, you have lots of holsters and guns and things, I tell you the Kydex especially. Well, even the leather ones. Yeah, a lot of them look alike. And uh, just because of the nature of the way they're made, they mostly usually don't imprint the model numbers that kind of thing on them. I write it on there, I keep a, a silver magic marker, or uh, whatever kind of, I would still call them magic markers, that was an old brand, I guess. Uh, what do you call them? Uh, well, you know, a marker. And I'll just write on the back, somewhere where it doesn't rub. Pretty smart, huh? Yeah, usually, if there is a place like that. And I'll just put, see, this is my K6 holster. Uh, the one I had for the, uh, the K6S, you know. All right. But guess what? This one fits. Why? Because it's the same size. 
Okay. Uh, these are carry around plus peas also. Boom. There you go. So, you know, that's all the accuracy you need. Yeah, maybe I'll sling one out there a little further before we go away today. Oh, what I was going to point out is they, uh, they, in reducing the weight, they, they cut out the under lug there on both sides and uh, they fluted the cylinder, tried to make it as light as possible. Of course, the alloy frame. And it's not as deluxe as the uh, standard model. It's, not, it's less money too. This one's like whatever, 600 in that neighborhood. Uh, you don't have a, a dovetail front sight. Uh, you do have an orange dot. It's not a night sight, and that kind of thing. So no, that matters to me. This is definitely a, a carry gun, pocket gun for me. Now the grip, they put these hogue grips, they come with these, this hogue grip, <laughs> and it, it extends you know, about this much in the front. And that's, that's a little too much for pocket carry for me. Uh, just in the way, I try to get the grips off, you know, <laughs> I, just, I said, oh man, I'm gonna end up cutting these things off. I, I fought them for a little bit. I was gonna put their grips, I think they're, oh, who is it that's famous for the uh, laser sight, Crimson Trace. Uh, the, the grips on my K6S are, are uh, crimson tray. I love those things. The rubber, the feel, they're, and they're they're like boot grips. You know, they don't extend down through here. I really like them. So I was going to put those on this firearm, and I think they fit. I wasn't 100% sure. Uh, so I was just wrestling with these to get them off, and finally, nah, you know me, I uh, I'm a guy. Yeah, if I fight something too long, I get out a bigger hammer. So I just got out my pocket knife and just shaved off the bottom of them. And actually, I like them. I, I like them like that. They feel good, just as good as the Crimson Trace. So may not look pretty on the bottom where I hacked them off, but I don't care. I've been known to do that. All right, so there you go. That's your lesson on the, uh, again, that's the Kimber uh, K6XS. Is that for extra small? <laughs> or lightweight okay so also appreciate Ballastall Wonder Juice and Talon Grips Talon Grips we are so lucky we are so lucky and again I appreciate uh, Gun Fun Targets for making these paper targets and uh, you know redesigning them whenever I want and all that kind of thing you've probably seen their targets in the uh, uh, a lot of the uh, indoor shooting ranges uh, they make all sorts of zombie targets all that kind of thing uh, all right let's shoot this thing 45 acp 45 acp is always fun isn't it i don't need my ears do i let's shoot it into this thing ah, let's shoot buds i missed there we go alabama holster <laughs> How about the SDI? Yeah, Silencer Central with their with their silencer. Boom, dead center. Yeah, figures, huh? Talent grips. Boom, and I'm empty. <laughs> Sorry, Ballastall. I'll just shoot the can here. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, and as I've said before, the 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 decibels don't translate through the camera. You know, I, I figured that one out. <laughs> Even even when I'm shooting steel, it it just is it's just it tickles you you know because it's such a different sound. You hear the steel so much louder, and you don't hear the gunfire and all that. And so it's it's for the shooter, it's it's interesting, very interesting. With I mean, when you put a suppressor on, whether you're shooting steel or wood or the dirt or paper or whatever. But I realize uh, from the camera because if I look at a video. Uh, it's just not as pronounced. The, it, it doesn't seem to reduce the, the sound as much, you know, when you're shooting steel. And it's not just the sound of the steel, there's just something about it, you know, when you're watching from home or wherever you're watching from, yeah. But when you're the shooter, it is still very dramatic. And those of you who have shot suppressed firearms, that's what I'm talking about, right? If anybody ever knows what I'm talking about. 230 grain slugs going out there. 
Let's see, let's see if I can hit the gong. I don't know what the problem was with that. Okay. That hurt a little metal. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna start I'm gonna shoot it in the dirt for right now. I don't know. I don't know. I really can't get a sight picture on it, but I'm, beyond that, I'm not sure. I may have to walk over there and kick it or something. Oh man, too much fun. Too much fun. Middle of July. Hard to believe, isn't it? Middle of July. Wow. Those of you who are in school will be going back to school before long. Wow. Yeah. College, high school, middle school. Just whatever. It'd be back to the grind with these new schedules uh, that I guess most schools have now. They call it year round. It's really not year round, but you get that fall break, spring break, and all that, and lots of time off during the year. So uh, they start school first of August, a lot of places, right? So uh, yeah, you'd be getting back at that. Take it seriously. Take it seriously. I bet I have some advice for young people. That ought to be my advice for young people. Well, it kind of ties in. I was going to mention that it might be wise and might be really, really good for you if you're young, you're in school, or you're 95 years old. If you've never read anything really uh, that, that stretched your brain, you know, maybe try that for a change, you know, rather than just reading online and looking at memes or something. Drag out some Emerson, Thoreau. Walt Whitman, Emily Dickinson, whoever, uh, just some classics and uh, wade through them a little bit. Shakespeare, uh, you might be surprised at how much you enjoy it, to tell you the truth. You really might. Uh, uh, one thing I discovered, I enjoy, of course, I enjoyed good literature when I was in uh, college, even high school, uh, not as much as I did when I was in college, but. When I got out of school and, and could choose my reading material, I really enjoyed that. I really did. I read mostly nonfiction, but even when I would just choose to go back and read a uh, Shakespearean play or something, or Emerson, I don't know. The fact that it wasn't required, I uh, wasn't gonna have to write a paper on it or hustle through it because I had 14 other things to read or do or to write for the next day or something. You know how it is. When you, you have time to do it on your own, it's just uh, interesting. So that's, of course, not good advice if you're in school maybe, but if you get free time, uh, pick out something that will stretch your mind a little bit, really. That's something that might just be missing these days, you know, uh, critical thinking skills, uh, just reading, read, you know, that's a, crazy thing, uh, uh, I, I truly did have my brain, myself, enlightened to a certain extent when I got off to college, which is kind of what it's all about. You, know, you get out of your your neighborhood, you, you get off into a bigger world maybe, and you're exposed to different people, you read different uh, things, you know, your professors are interesting, and all this kind of, and that's really what happened with me, and probably a lot of you. That, yeah, I, I mean, I, my mind was expanded to, uh, to an extent, and uh, there was a bit of a, an awakening, maybe. Not woke now, not, not woke, that's sort of the opposite. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it, 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 I mean, now what seems to happen is, you know, people, of course, everybody, you're exposed to so much more now, and, and you know what's going on in the world, and, uh, more sophisticated when you're 16 years old than I was at 22 probably but so what happens is now it seems like is you go off to college to get indoctrinated into some crazy loony way of uh, looking at the world you know and uh, I'm glad I came through at a time when that didn't happen and I don't remember any professors trying to do that and I was an English major so that's usually one of the, the most uh, leftist uh, areas of, of, a, of a university, you know, think about it. Um, 
but I just had some great professors at Austin P State University. Uh, great professors and uh, was friends with a lot of them. I played basketball, I was a scholarship basketball player. And, uh, you know, I was a little bit of a big fish in a small pond here and everything. And, 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 and I didn't even sense, there, it was, there was probably some of it, but uh, the professors uh, that I had in the English department were real support. They didn't all come to basketball games. Some of them did. And, uh, but, uh, but, you know, they were supportive. They asked about the games. And so there wasn't this as much uh, that I perceived this athletics versus academia and that kind of thing, you know, going on there that you might expect, you know, sometimes. Uh, and, you know, so, it, so I had a really, really good experience. Uh, no one tried to indoctrinate me. I sort of indoctrinated myself. Uh, speaking of Emerson and Thoreau and Shakespeare, and some of the great writers and great thinkers of the, of the universe, uh, I, I just found it fascinating. I just thoroughly enjoyed it. But then how did I get off on all that? I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, uh, oh yeah, my advice for young people, read something that, uh, and read both sides of it. That's the other thing. Don't take anybody's word. Hardly these days, haven't we learned that? For anything, it's just hard to trust people. <laughs> you need to explore a lot of different uh, sources, don't you think? Let's shoot this uh, Kimber. All right. And uh, you know, you never know what. Uh, gosh, one of these days, I'll figure out my favorite gun, Mona. You know, before I get old, I think. <laughs> You just never know. This could end up being, I don't know yet. I, won't, I don't want to jump the gun on this, no pun intended, but uh, this could end up being my favorite carry gun, you know, at, at my age. I'm just now discovering a really nice fire. But it's not just because I've been so ignorant and dumb and haven't looked in the right places. You know, the technology and the gun companies keep coming out with uh, newer offerings and many are better than the previous, right? Think about uh, in the days, well, just go back 10 years before the, uh, the SIG. You, know, you may not like some of these guns I could mention, but like the P365, maybe uh, when those did not exist, or the Hellcat and, and others like it, and the new FN and Reflex and others. Before those even existed, uh, what were we carrying? Are there other guns? Well, you know, now and five years from now, you know, the firearms people are carrying uh, the majority are a lot of this new um, grouping of firearms in it. And uh, so that is, things are just always changing. Uh, I'm, it's not my fault Kimber waited so long to make this in an air weight. I, you know, I've liked air weight revolvers for my pocket for a long, long time, 25 years. So. It's not like I just didn't notice it. Almost didn't, did I? But it did just come out. So. Anyway, I don't know. I'm giving it a good try. I kind of, I think I like it. I think I like it a lot. We'll see. Well, we see if we can put one on a gong. Let's see. I think I'll, I think I'll shoot. Try it double action. I'll show off and try it double action. You think I should? Yeah. Pretty funny, huh? Uh, for new shooters, that's the only way this firearm fires. <laughs> There we go. Well, look at that, Mr. Guardian, Dan Wesson. <laughs> Let's try it again. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think of that, Mr. 45 SCP? I won't give him too hard a time. He's got that big muzzle uh, obstruction in his face, right? Oh, oh, did you notice I got the cowboy back up? I finally remembered to bring the cowboy over here. So let's put a bullet on him. Yeah, we want him to be neglected his first day back. <laughs> yep, pretty good, pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I like it. Uh, I, I know I like it, the way it cheats the trigger and all that, the six rounds. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, you don't know right away. You think you do. I've got to carry something in a while. But, you know, it, it seems to carry just fine since I've got that lip cut off the, the grip. And that might be a tip for you. You might want to be more civilized about it if you buy one of these. 
and has that same grip and you intend to carry it in your pocket, you might be uh, a lot smarter, more civilized and, and actually, uh, you know, remove the grips and replace them with others. Uh, but actually, I kind of like them, I like them that configuration. So that's the thing about firearms I've talked about a fair amount. If you have a small firearm, short barrel, lightweight and all that, that's all cool. Well, it's pretty easy to put grips on it that are oversized and so big, you lose the advantage of the small, of it being small, you know, and light, you know. Uh, like, now they weren't crazy large, but if you, I mean, there are grips probably for this thing you could put on here just really large. There's no way you could carry it in your pocket. So then you got a belt gun. Well, okay, if it's only a belt gun, do I need it in alloy frame? Because it's a little harder to shoot, especially for inexperienced shooters. Uh, well, I just, if on the belt, you know, I'm not gonna notice that much difference maybe between this and stainless, you know. So, so that's something for you to think about because most of you are, are not pocket carriers maybe as much as I am. And you're more concerned with fashion. <laughs> Uh, and that does separate me from a lot of people. It, it really does. Uh, not as uh, a lot of people are wearing just standard jeans, not even loose fitting, maybe. And if I were wearing just regular jeans, non, you know, regular, I don't know about tight fitting, but not loose fitting jeans, uh, it becomes a little more problematic uh, carrying a pistol of any size in your pocket. And, it, and if it does, even if you can get in there, it just prints a lot more and all that sort of thing. So, so I sound like I'm a, I have religious fervor when I talk about pocket care, but I have uh, managed and modified my life around that to some extent. You know, I, I, I've, uh, well, I used to wear loose fitting blue jeans Then I discovered through the cargo, these are uh, Duluth, that the cargo said, hmm, pretty nice pockets. And so I even increased the size of the pockets. I take them to a tailor, I've talked about it before, and I have about that much on them, square them up a little bit. I do the same with, and then I discovered the long pants, they have long pants, the same exact pants. Pockets are exactly the same. Uh, they're just longer pants, they're legs. And uh, so you notice in the last few years, I'm always wearing the same khaki, pants so either the cargo shorts or those long pants so everything's the same they they will handle my gosh I could carry a Glock 19 uh, pocket in my if I wanted to I'm talking about in the slash pocket but uh, so anyway I've modified you know, in my clothing and uh, up to some but not to the point where uh, that's one of the things you read about you know well, you don't want to have to change the way you dress in order to carry a gun and all that kind of thing all the time. You know, you have to have an outer garment, or you have to do this, or you got to have a jacket when you don't really want one or need one, all that kind of thing. And that does become, you know, problematic. So I, I am a bit of a scientist, right? I, I uh, put some thought into things like that. I don't want to uh, do that. I, don't, I used to wear a vest even in hot, humid days. Like, and even a vest, it's just it's hot and heavier and sweaty and all that, you know, and, uh, but I, I already was sold on cargo pants. That's not hard to get sold on, is it? Many of you wear car, good cargo pants, right? Uh, shorts. And that's what was happening for a year or two. I would uh, have the, I don't think I even had the pockets modified, it, you know, originally, of course. And, you know, about anything I wanted to carry, I could, I could carry it in the summer and I had plenty of pockets my wallet, I don't like putting anything in the back pockets, you know, and you know, I've got my cargo and my keys down there and all that, and I just, I'd go for whatever, three, four months, you know, just my system just worked great. And then go back to jeans and when it would get cold, and I'd, yeah, I'd just have to change my, my system. It just it was a problematic. So I love having cargo pants and cargo shorts with all the pockets the same. And uh, I don't have to change anything year round. So, but again, if you are fashion conscious, you know, uh, you know, and you look in the mirror and you see yourself with uh, whatever baggy cargo shorts or uh, cargo pants and don't like them or uh, whatever it is, you know, and you're afraid you're not going to get that job 
you know, because you don't look like a model, then uh, it may not work for you. So yeah, and, and a lot of people are like that. They they uh, they just like good old regular jeans. So you don't have the options I have. I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying that's a fact. So the fact that I can pocket carry and, and I make a uh, I talk about it a lot. Is it's it's this is like belt carry for a lot of people because it's just so simple for me. I just you know it's right there you know and uh, same place. All right. So what do you think about these guns? Anything else I need to talk? Oh yeah, you know what? Uh, I was uh, looking at that uh, video, the Woods Walk. Was it with the uh, 1886? You know, and uh, reminded me. <laughs> I mentioned the walnuts on the ground. Probably came from a walnut tree or something like that. I don't know if I've ever told you all. I used to. Uh, uh, I'd always put a bonus question on quizzes and things. And I gave a lot of quizzes, and even on tests, I'd have a bonus question something goofy quite often. Most of the time it wasn't even material related. You know, I just thought it was fun. It wasn't even part of the content. And uh, and one of the questions I would put on there was, uh, every year you get a new batch of people and you got different classes too. And, and I would uh, I would just, uh, you know, have a, what kind of trees do walnuts come from? Where do walnuts come from? Or what, you know, what, what sort of tree produces walnuts or something, however I phrased it. And and sometimes it, I, if it's an oral quiz, you know, I'd have to say it, you know, real seriously, you know. And, and I literally, uh, more than half of the students, seventh graders, would not know that, not know that. They would say oak trees and uh, maples and just all kinds of things. And they were serious too. They did, they didn't know that walnuts came from walnut trees. These are smart kids, you know, 12, 13. And uh, what was another one? And I would try to trick them too. I and mean, of course, you know, they, <laughs> just so I could make fun of them afterwards, because a lot of the smartest kids would miss some of those bonus questions. And uh, one of my favorites, I'd do it. I could only do it once, you know, or get around. But uh, I'd say, think about. I'd be really serious in an oral pop quiz and say, kind of think. And of course, they got to where they were always begging for a bonus question at the end of these things. You know, who's the bonus question? Okay, let me think of one. So I said, okay, think about where you live in the neighborhood where you live and, and where the sunlight comes in to the windows in the morning and everything or in the afternoon. If you think about it, you can, you can kind of, uh, you probably remember this. I said, uh, tell me whether in your neighborhood the sun sets in the west or it sets in the east. And I just say as serious as a heart attack. So I know where it sets, it, it, where I live but I'm about 30 miles from here. So where, where does it set in your neighborhood? And I would just, just like that, like, like, you know, so even the kids that, that would, well, sun sets in the West, but I don't know now. I would actually plant doubt just by being so serious. And, and a lot of them would miss it. It was so funny. And it, it'd be you know, some of the brilliant kids sometimes. And of course that'd give me some material for the rest of the year to pick on them about, you know, as they're winning their merit scholar badges and all that kind of thing in their scholarships. <laughs> so yeah, he might be pretty smart, but he doesn't know where the sun sets in Nashville. Uh, that was terrible. Let's see if I can hit the cowboy with this thing. Yeah. All right. Let me try a couple more shots out there. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right, that one hit it square. A couple of those sort of bounce into it. <sighs> ah, I feel better though. I got a turn 30 grain slug on the on the gong. So anyway, anything else you want to know about? I don't know. Nothing that can't wait till next week, right? Uh, so anyway, my little lesson on firearms. Uh, a lot of firearms talk. A lot of missing today. So. Uh, and, and uh, I did bring up a lot of things uh, that, that uh, affect you as a gun buyer, and that kind of thing, just, just from my experience, things I've learned, things that are important to me, things that uh, I think are 
valuable uh, pieces of information maybe about firearms like this. Uh, don't be afraid of them because they are alloy. Uh, if you're looking for a firearm to go shoot thousands of rounds through, you, you know, why pick an alloy firearm? It wouldn't be that much fun, you know. Uh, and, you know, it shoots fine. You don't need to shoot it a thousand times. Now, provided you've got skill in shooting a revolver, a double action revolver, like I say, maybe one like it, maybe the heavy version, you know, and you've shot enough to feel comfortable with it. Or if you got the funds, buy two of them. If you just feel like, I, I'm not going to carry that unless I can put 500 rounds through it once a month or something, well, get you two of them, you know. Uh, I don't know, wear the other one out. You can let us know, do a test, uh, thousand round test, let us know how it's doing, you know after you get up to 10,000 rounds through this alloy frame firearm, I don't know. But you generally don't have to shoot it that much. Okay, it seems tight, I don't know. Kind of like it, kind of like it. Uh, isn't that funny? A firearm I didn't, uh, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, I did not know existed. And, and it might be uh, a favorite carry gun now. So I'll clean it and uh, Put it back in my pocket. Pretty cool, huh? So many guns, so little time. Uh, that's the way it goes. And uh, the old uh, 1911, still hard to beat. The Banished 45, tames it quite a bit. Feels cool, feels cool. Uh, you would probably enjoy a suppressor, you know. I <laughs> mean, it may not be something where you need one for every firearm or every chambering, every caliber, but they are, uh, uh, they're they're just interesting they, they really are so and it's like they're uh I, I guess most of them are i don't know the uh silencer central uh the banish uh, line they're uh, uh titanium so even though you got this big thing on your gun and of course this has uh two compartments i could take that extension off of it it'd be a little shorter uh, but they're not heavy as, as they look i i know they look like wow you got that big chunk of metal it's like having a another firearm hanging on the end but they are very for those who don't know titanium is light <laughs> okay so uh, you don't really you know, feel that weight it's just the, the size makes it tough to pocket carry i will admit that but i haven't tried it I haven't tried it I'm losing my voice so i will see you all next week and uh, we'll be cranking on towards the end of july uh, hard to believe, hard to believe how fast time flies. It really is. And uh, really appreciate you all tuning in. Remember what I said, that, that Tucker Carlson video is evidence, you know, that you're just not getting uh, alerted, generally speaking, you know, on, uh, on videos. So hopefully you get back to the channel and uh, keep up with whatever stupidity we're posting, okay? I'd hate for you to miss it because it's an excellent opportunity to lower your IQ. Yeah, really is. So, y'all be good. Take care. Really appreciate you. And I run into you every week here and there and around. And it's always good to run into you. Again, don't, don't hesitate to speak. And uh, I'll see you next week. Life is good.